Western Australian grain grower Ben Cripps is reaping the rewards of shifting to wider row spacings for canola in the northern agricultural region. Local trials funded by the GRDC and run by the Department of Agriculture and Food WA and Northern Agri Group members have shown this can reduce risks and cut costs. First year I just did some farmer strips off my own back and um, that showed no real penalty. So the next year, in conjunction with DAFWA and GRDC, with the uh, break crop program that DAFWA is running, we stepped it up and we had three farmers across the district, myself included, and DAFWA working together where we had small plot and farmer scale trials replicated across all three farms. It showed um, certainly no significant loss from the wide rows and on my farm it certainly showed a bit of a gain. Ben says switching from 30 centimetre to 60 centimetre spacings and dropping seeding rates for his canola program is delivering higher yields. Last year we definitely had an increased yield at the lower seeding rates. Um, with the drier August that we had um, it just meant more available water for the plants that were there. They weren't trying to outcompete each other as much. Um, and then that backs up what I saw the year before as well. Um, the lower the seeding rate, the higher my yield. Um, I think both years for every, approximately every half a kilo I go down in seeding rate, I've, I've increased my yield by 100 kilos. The same seeding rate on a narrow row seemed to stress even before the, before the same seeding rate on wide row. The wide row on itself seems to help with water harvesting and water availability and then by reducing the seed rate you increase that efficiency again. Taking out every second row leaves more water for the plants that are there and buys time after crop emergence if there is a dry spell. Canola has a, has a root system that goes down and out so by taking out every second row you're actually leaving more water there for the plants that you have. We generally aim at about 15 to 20 plants per square metre. By having such a low Plant, number, uh, per, plant numbers per square metre, um, we may limit our top end in those really big years. Um, so a 2011 sort of thing, we may, we may cap our top end. Um, but I'm looking for a consistent crop. If I can achieve um, between 0.9 and 1.2 every year, I can budget easier and I can work to it. If I'm using 45 bucks a hectare worth of seed versus um, 70 to 90, um, you know, ranging from about 2.2 kilos to 3 kilos, when I can achieve the same with 1.5 kilos. You know, that's between 25 and 45 bucks a hectare that I haven't out, had to outlay before, I even, before the season even starts. Ben estimates the wide row system is delivering fuel savings of about 30%, reducing fertiliser costs up front and potentially could help with disease management in conducive seasons. All of a sudden you've got 45, 55, 70 dollars a hectare that you haven't outlaid before the season started. So that equates to nearly 200 kilos of canola that you don't have to produce at the end of the year to break even. So you break even being lower, you profit, you start making profit earlier than what you would have. And that's, that's what it's about for us. The Crips are using precision seeding equipment and have adjusted their fertiliser regime to suit the wide row system. You have to be aware that you're actually concentrating, you know, double the amount into the rows. So you have, we certainly back our potash rates off. Um, there was some work done last year where rates were halved of fertiliser across the board and there was no real penalty and I'm, I'm going to explore that further this year. Um, however, I think in that so that you don't mine your soil, it may not be actually a saving in the long run. It may be that you can reduce the risk on the canola side, but then you might have to up it a little bit on the wheat, on the wheat which is a safer bet the following year to make up for what you've used in the soil.